So this is our cauliflower. You can see it's got this thick stem underneath and some pieces of the greenery that was once attached. I'm just gonna try and rip these back as best I can to expose more of that stem. Cauliflower can be a little difficult to get into, but once you learn some of the little tricks, it's not that hard. So I'm just peeling back those things. Now, I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna go as close up to the florets as I can and I'm gonna cut through to peel away that piece. Now, I got a couple florets with it, so I'm just gonna cut those free. There we go. Set those aside. Then I'm gonna basically just come in and kind of try and cut the florets off piece at a time in sort of larger chunks. You can see I'm sort of choosing these places where it naturally is already pulling apart, like this gap here. That'll be a place where I'll cut down the middle now and have exposed more. So then what I'm gonna wanna do is I'm actually gonna cut up really high towards the florets and cut down. And now I've got a lot of usable and I can actually start pulling it apart even and don't have to do too much more cutting. Pieces. You might have noticed that there was a little bit of this darkening on the top of the cauliflower. That doesn't change anything. It doesn't mean it's gone bad, anything like that. It's just some unique character for the cauliflower. Again, pulling it apart. Cutting pieces apart. Like with all of this stuff, we're trying to maintain relatively uniform size. And I would just keep going on and doing all the rest with my other florets until I had it all cut up. It really doesn't take that long. There you go, cauliflower. Hey y'all, we have already chopped our cauliflower into pieces. Now I'm gonna take my pieces and put them into my food processor. If you don't have a food processor, ricing cauliflower is gonna be pretty difficult. You're gonna have to try and do it by hand. I don't even really know the effectiveness of that. I'm sure you can do it. I wouldn't recommend it. You can, in fact, buy rice cauliflower oftentimes at the grocery store, which is great. And if you want to do that to save yourself some time and for the convenience of it or you don't have a food processor, go for it. I highly recommend it. I do that in my normal life uh, because it is more convenient. But this isn't really the end of the world. It doesn't make it that much um, more inconvenient, though, if you just do it right. So that's in the food processor. Everything's nice and tight on there. I'm using the button that's pulse to chop button. And I'm just gonna, you know, every so often do it, pulse it. I wanna break up those bigger chunks, but I don't want it to like grind down super, super fine. Looks like I might be there. Couple more pulses. And then you can see that I have rice cauliflower. It's not the most perfectly even. There's some larger chunks in there. So, you know, that I'll, now that I'm looking at it, I could maybe put that top back on and pulse it a few more times. But that's roughly the texture that we're looking for when it comes to rice cauliflower. All right, that's it. Got my, cauliflower, my head of cauliflower here. First thing I want to do is I want to start removing the leaves because I don't want to eat them. So I just like to sort of start pulling them off. You can use a knife too to help. And as I get closer in and they get a little bit harder to grab, I might use a knife to help with that. And I am in fact gonna use, not that knife, one knife, this knife, to help just take a little bit of that stem off. Just as I'm sure you can sort of see, like there's, it's dark and gross. We don't wanna eat that, take that away. Now I am actually gonna take this small paring knife to just cut some of the, last for little remnants of the leaves away. Because with this, you know, I want to keep pretty much most of it intact so that I actually create big, thick steaks or, you know, full steaks that are still together, but I don't want to necessarily eat these leaves. So I'm gonna cut around. And I'm kind of trying to cut through the leaf, but not the, not the rest of the, now, I can also trim some of these after I cut the steaks. So, there we go, trimmed. Now, what I like to do, I mean, I'm sure you could just cut across like that, but what I like to do is actually sort of cut through the middle and then cut to either side. 
so, and you don't get a whole lot of steaks out of one cauliflower necessarily, because the way that it works is it maintains its shape by being able to have, you know, this strong structure down the middle. So, put once down that, and I don't know, maybe that's about half an inch to one side. On the other side, and I've got a couple of steaks. And this one still has a pretty decent um, connection through it. So I'll get another little steak out of this one. But you can see it's starting to fall apart, not really being held together very well anymore. So that's kind of like a half steak. Then these other pieces that I have left over that I wasn't really able to make steaks out of, I would go ahead and pull them apart and just have florets left. So as you can see, let me push this all to the side and give myself a little bit of a cleaner area. You can see some of the leaf remnants here, so I'm just gonna cut those off. So like right here, those are leaf remnants. So I'll take that off. So yeah, you get a couple of steaks out of there. So, you know, one head of cauliflower, you might get up to four steaks, depending on how thick the stem is. But oftentimes you'll only really get two and a half. Let's call it two and a half. But again, then you use the rest of the head, make florets, cook it for something else. Probably what I'm gonna do with the recipe that I'm making steaks is I'll actually go ahead and roast the rest of these as well with the steaks and then um, and prepare them the, rest the same way. So I get kind of cauliflower two ways. All right, that's it.